Okay, so welcome everyone to day number four. Day number four is a pretty important day because we will discuss the qualities we need to have in order to give shelter. And already yesterday, at the very end of the session, we were establishing why this is so important. Who can remember? Why is it so important? Two reasons, not you, you said it yesterday. Let's see if the others remember. Yes, yes, yes. So that we know where to take shelter and that we know what qualities to strive for that we one day can reach out to others and give shelter. Right? Because we were establishing in lesson number one that this will make our life you know, deeper and meaningful, not superficial. Our life, our relationships. That's what it means to mature in devotional life, that we want to reach out to others. So we should be very interested in knowing what kind of you know, qualities do I have to develop so that I eventually can play that role and pass on all that mercy which I have received from others. You know, because we were saying yesterday, ultimately we are a product of mercy actually from the Vaishnavas. So many devotees, they you know, shed a few drops of blood for our um, you know, progress, for our education, for our upliftment. So if we really feel grateful, if we really value what Krishna consciousness is doing for our life, it will be very natural that we want to reach out to others and pass that on to others. Right? So, we have a whole list here of qualities and actually I have to say that this list is not my invention or something. Actually, I think most of the things, maybe a couple I added, but most of the qualities are actually from Narantaswami's book, Taking Care of Christmas Devotees. He wrote this book, right? Yeah, it's available, it used to be available in the congregational uh, preaching office there, the long building. It's also translated into Russian and Bengali and Chinese and, yes. So, yes, he listed those qualities there and I think he actually got it from a little booklet that Radha Swami put together. So it comes in Prapura, he also writes Prapura. <laughs> yes, so let us have a look here. First and foremost quality is that we can only give shelter if we have shelter ourselves. <coughs> this is a really major one. This is like the, the you know, fundamental Principle. It's the foundation. We can only give something to others which we have ourselves. If we don't have it, we can't give it to others. So that's always number one consideration. How much am I sheltered? Am I really sheltered in the heart or is it just some external formality here? Yes, yes, I have a guru or something. But no, do I really have these trusting, confidential relationships where I want to be corrected? You know? Yes. Yes. So unless we are sheltered ourselves, we cannot give shelter to others. Very clear. And that makes it very clear, once again, we established it already in the first session, that this principle of having to be sheltered or wanting shelter, this accompanies us throughout our whole spiritual problem, uh, life. It's not something just as a young factor or something, 
but it is ongoingly. We were saying, even Raghunath Das Goswami, he was serving under the care of Swarup Damada. So, this we tend to forget. We have this mundane understanding that, oh, now I'm so advanced, I don't need this anymore. You know, no. It's not that we need it, but we, the more advanced we are, the more we will want it. The more we will seek that internal dependence. We will want it. That's the point. You know? Yeah. So, it means, even, you know, it doesn't matter on which level we are, you know, even Diksha Gurus, they can only give shelter if they are sheltered themselves. Yes. You cannot give anything to others which you don't have yourself. You know? yes. And by no means, it does not mean, oh, they are unqualified, they are lacking something. No, it is simply the principle of spiritual relationships. You know, the spiritual mood, as Jiva Goswami says, those who are inspiring for Prema, they seek their dependence on others with similar goals and tastes. So it does not mean, oh, they are unqualified and that's why they need somebody there or something. No, they want it. You know, that's the whole mood. They want it. They search for it. They don't feel happy if they don't have it. requires quite a paradigm shift, you know, because as we were saying yesterday also, in material life and its culture, it's a sign for weakness. Or oh, you need somebody there, you know, or oh, he's helpless. Or oh, it means unsuccessful actually, not, not, not success, you know, yes. But spiritual life, opposite mood and opposite vision. So let us quickly understand here what can happen if our shelter giver is not sheltered. In a very practical way, what can we face? They philosophically deviate. Huh? They philosophically deviate. Yes, you can not even only philosophically, you know, there's so many ways of deviating. <laughs> you know, you can go a little off the track and then the Count's leaves, those who take shelter of him, where can they go? Also on track. Also on track. I mean, I meant it. Where can they go to, you know, to, to share their observations there, to reveal their mind? You know, they have nobody to report to. He's not really accountable to anybody. You know? And that is the Vaishnava etiquette. If we have some, you know, some observation in a senior devotee where we feel there is something not quite right, it is not our position to, to confront that senior person. No, it's not. We are actually meant to go to his authority, to his shelter giver. And we reveal, we reveal our mind to him. And then we leave it up to him to address it or not address it. Maybe it's just our imagination and concoction. Well, he will be able to see whether we are just imagining it or, or whether it needs to be addressed. You know, and then as a junior devotee, then we have done our duty, our responsibility, that we report it to his seniors. So that if a person does not have such a trusting, sheltering, confidential relationship. So where do we go? You know? We, don't, we, 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 only, we are left alone with our mind and our observations and all oh, something is wrong here. This behavior is not proper. Maybe an etiquette with a man, women etiquette or whatever it may be. You know, we might see or oh, there's something not right. But if he doesn't have a shelter himself, then, well, what do we do? We can't really do anything. Yes. I have a question. Um, <clears throat> what if that person's shelter has left the planet and their shelter is in their heart? Like their Prabhupada disciple, and their senior Prabhupada disciple. Yes. So then you see that maybe they may not be 
doing the right thing when you don't know they're doing the right thing or not. Well, that's the point. You know, Diksha Guru is not enough. Even if it's proper disciples, there has to be somebody who we have a trusting, confidential relationship with. Right? Yes. That's why I was telling the story when Raja Swami was saying in regards to Raja Swami, and he is my Lord and Master. But not everyone's like Narendra Maharaj that acknowledges a godmother as a. Well, master. well, but that's you know, if, if we think there's nobody for me to take shelter of, well, then maybe we have a bit of a problem or something. You know, because even though there might all be Prabhupada disciples, there might all be godmothers, but still, there's always somebody who is in some points a little stronger than we are. Well, let's say you have, you have someone for your own shelter, but someone laterally to that person, like a godbrother of that shelter, behaves inappropriately. But the, your shelter is not the shelter of the of the godbrother. That godbrother doesn't acknowledge shelter from any other godbrother. Well, that's a problem. That's why anybody who wants to give shelter actually has to be sheltered himself. Can two people on an equal level shelter one another? Yes, you know, because even equal level depends how you define it. You know, there's always something others have which we don't have ourselves. You know, come on, you know. Huh? Even though we might be all externally equal, that we all joined at the same time and we have the same to do or something, but still there's differences. Of course, there's differences in you know, spiritual you know, empowerment and strength and so on, and realization. You know? Yes, it's not all one or something. And it's, it is going on amongst quite a few sannyasis, you know, Prabhupada disciples. Maybe not all of them, but as I was mentioning yesterday, you know, this is one thing, all those personalities who could not maintain their sannyasa and guru position had in common that they did not have shelter and relationships. They did not have. And we mentioned already yesterday, Dhruva Maharaj, classic example. You know, he was on the level of Baba, very high elevated level. And still, you know, his Transcendental emotions turned into material emotions and material attachments. Sorry. Yes. Huh? Yeah, you got attached to the view. Did I say something else? No, I didn't say to the I said yeah, no, no. Huh? I missed her. Huh? I said to the did I? Sorry, Brahma. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was in my thoughts with Brahma. <laughs> Yes, yes, of course, Bhagavad you know, he got attached to the deer. So, and you know, he wanted to give shelter without being sheltered himself. So he didn't have anybody who was tapping him on the shoulder and saying, here, don't get carried away. What about your spiritual practice here? You get emotionally involved in this whole relationship with the deer. You know? So, I mean, that's a brilliant example, you know. How, how dangerous it is when we are not sheltered. Yes. Should we have different, or can we have different kinds of sheltering relationships for different paths in, in our life? You know, for example, um, maybe, um, you know, like I said, we have some philosophical doubts. We may go to one, one, one yes. to go to, whereas, you know, perhaps if we're feeling a bit down, we just need you know, kind of a bit of a, you know, kind of a more emotional kind of encouragement. We may go to another Yes, road. yes, 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 yes. That's very true also, you know, that not just everything is maybe we, we find in one person, you know. So we get something from this person, something from that person. That's why there, you know, there's room for several sheltering relationships. 
spiritual heart is large, there is room for many personalities there, and we can you know, pick up some drops of nectar and support and encouragement from so many sources, you know. But definitely at least one trusting, confidential relationship has to be there. At least one where we can really go and reveal our mind and share our innermost struggles and fears and, and battles. Yes. One other thing that's very opposite to materialistic culture is if you go over someone's head to their superior and say something, it's an incredible breach of etiquette and disrespect. And it's like. Very true. Very true. It's very yes. true. Very true. Yes. And he's saying in material culture and material life, it would be you know, accepted as breaking etiquette if we go to somebody superior. And com not complain, reveal our mind, share some doubts or concerns. You know, people get offended. I've been a few times in this situation, you know, where I saw something and I revealed my, per my mind to one person and then that person said, well, you better address this and send it in to that and that person. You know, he is meant to deal with such issues. And then the person concerned was so offended and asking me, why didn't you approach me? And I, I said to him, well, I, I don't think it's the etiquette that I am approaching you as a senior person with this. You know? Yes. yes. Are there times in spiritual culture where you can't directly approach a person? Do you have concerns? Well, seniors, you know, as a junior person, it's not, it's not the adhika, it's not our position to point out something in that senior person because, see, that etiquette has to be there otherwise, as a young devotee, we very easily we find faults in seniors yeah? but this is very dangerous and also as a young devotee, we cannot understand stand what's going on at senior levels we don't know we cannot understand the mindset and, and thought of a senior person because we are projecting very easily our neophyte vision of things, you know, Atmavarma Nyateja Gat, you know, thinking that the way I perceive the world, everybody perceives it, you know, that's usually what we call projecting, you know, in, in modern language, projection. So for a junior person, very dangerous mentality when they start finding all kinds of, you know, faults and discrepancies in seniors and that they think they have to correct it or point it out. That can poison our whole spiritual life. Really, it is a very dangerous thing. Of course, you know, in modern mundane life, it's a very trendy thing. Yeah, it's cool, we all equal. Yes, why don't you tell me what you think or something, you know? No, it can really poison one's spiritual practice, you know. I mean, like today, we will give you a feedback form. <laughs> so this doesn't mean that in an authorized way, a junior person can give feedback about a course or something, what was good in, in regards to facilitation of content and, and end. You know, so but then the person who receives that feedback, oh well, it gives them an impression where everybody's at here, but he might not even accept everything so seriously. You know, because sometimes all kinds of ideas come which are not adequate, which are not appropriate to to accept and, and implement. You know, so that that's up to the senior person to decide how he deals with that. You know. Some things he might pick up, some things, uh, and it gives him simply an idea where everybody's mindset is, you know, by hearing their feedback. So that's a different thing. But to personally point out, oh, I think you should not be like this and this and that and that, or whatever, this is inappropriate for a junior person. Because that feeds that fault-finding mentality, which we have anyway as younger devotees. No? As younger devotees, we have that tendency, we see all faults in everybody else, but not in us. 
sorry, if that etiquette would not be there, and I think, oh my god, this would really poison people's spiritual lives, you know, so that's why that is an important etiquette, just to protect us from this fault finding mentality, because it's not our position to correct the senior devotees. If we have some doubt, go to his superior person, his authority, and let him deal with it. That's a proper etiquette. Then it comes from the senior. You know? And he can look, is this of any value or is it just some imagined thing? You know? yeah. Okay. Anything else about this point of a shelter giver? having to be sheltered. There will be many more things coming, so let's just stick to that. Anything about that? Huh? You had half your hand up there, and I wasn't sure whether you want to ask something. No, hold on. No, hold on. Sometimes everybody can see, uh oh, here he's going off the track. You know, there's something not right. His spiritual practice is not balanced, it's completely imbalanced. He's feeding some weeds there. But then there's nobody there who can address the topic. You know, there's nobody confidentially connected with that person. You know, that that person will be eager to accept correction. So in an organization like ISKCON, how to fix that? Huh? In an organization like ISKCON, how to fix that problem? How, that, how, how to, to fix, fix it? What am I preaching about it, I think? You know, it can't really be legislated so easily. I mean, that's what I was trying to put in this manual for care for leaders, to put this in there. You know, because I mean, how many leaders do we have to sacrifice until we realize, you know, we have lost so many wonderful personalities. In my eyes, this is one of the main reasons why they went off the track. We lost them. You know? Yes, because nobody could catch the situation, you know, people see it. And then people think, oh, well, who is this confidential friend? Oh, there is nobody there. Oh, well, then what can you do? You just can't watch it and let it go on. You can't actually help that person. Because when a person is a little bit in a crisis, and everybody will face crises, crises, is that crises. crises, thank you. Everybody will. Yeah, I thought crisis is something that will happen. Everybody will face some crises sooner or later because that's part of the whole, you know, turning process there, the whole purificational process. You know, it, 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 when we have some crises and problems, that's when we usually make most advancement. You know, because things come to the surface, we have to deal with them. We have to scoop it off, throw it out, like making ghee, you know, boiling the butter. All kinds of foamy stuff comes up. So that's usually when we make progress. But we need somebody to help us see what is going on. We were discussing, you know, in the first session. How our vision is cloudy. We cannot see. And especially when we are stuck in a crisis. We cannot see that the emotions, you know, and the ego gets involved. And, 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 and often we just cannot assess the situation. You know? So, and if there's no relationship already cultivated before the crisis comes, in the crisis, then it's usually too late. 
then the ego will not allow you know then oh what, what is everybody thinking and how can I share this with anybody everybody will know about it and 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 it will be another crisis in Iskon scandal I mean another scandal in Iskon and 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 so and then people are stuck with that problem and we have had it happening you know that leaders walk around for 10 years with with serious problems and they have nobody to share it with who can help? And that's very sad. That's very sad when such things are going on. You know? Yeah. Very sad. So it can be very lonely there on the top of the pyramid, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And I, I feel very strongly about this that we have to make something, do something to protect our leaders. That this will not happen again and again and again. That's care for leaders. That's how we have to care for them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think most of our leaders would actually accept that fact, though? Like, for example, you know, a very senior devotee. Oh, I, yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. That's the loaded yeah. question. Yeah. Huh? That's the loaded question. Uh, the loaded question, yeah. I mean, you know, we have some examples who are practicing it. They are. Because we're all such different personalities and some people are maybe they've never had a close friend in their life. Yeah, well, but then we lead a risky life. Yeah. Very risky. Would such a person still be considered an advanced emoji or not? I don't really? want to, you know, pass yeah. judgments here if it's advanced yeah. or not advanced or something. You know, I, I, who am I to judge, you know? Yeah. But it, let's, let's, Let's conclude on that point that one leads a very extremely risky life if one does not have such relationships. That's the whole thing. Very risky life. Very risky. Yes. If you want to tell us something. If a devotee is a very senior devotee, Say it again, if, if a person's shelter is maybe guru, yes, then it's hard to approach room for him, guru or somebody shelter. else. For example, for example, the junior devotee can see uh, uh, some uh, devotees who are very senior and uh, they can understand the behavior of uh, maybe his counselor yes. or some senior devotee. Yes. And that senior devotee's shelter is a uh, ritual master. Then the junior devotee thinks, oh, I can't approach uh, uh, that this senior devotee's shelter because uh, it is too high, the spiritual master, I can't approach <coughs> such questions. Well, I mean, usually, you know, when we talk about systems, you know, usually it is set up like this that there is somebody else there between the counselor and the guru. You know, that every, you know, that the way we practice the council system in Ukraine. Every yantra has so many counselors, and then there is a Maha Kurata, a Maha counselor. You know, he is kind of guiding all the counselors in that yantra. Yeah, but ideally that's the point, that for most of us, who is simply pretty far away for most of us. And I mean, if the situation is really like that, no, then if we feel some serious concern, then we, we, we have to bring this to the Guru's notice. We have to. To protect our counselor. It's service to him. You know? Yes. You may not see it that way. Well, but you know, he, he has to learn to see it that way. Yes. Yes, it's for his protection. You know, if, if that is really the only authority who is there, you know, and we really think it is, you know, serious, you know, serious enough to be damaging to the counselor, then it's our duty to point it out to go. And he will deal with it. Let him deal with it. He might not even answer to your letter or something. 
you know, but at least he acknowledges it and, and you know, let's hope if he is really the, the counselor as well, not only guru but trusting counselor, then there must be a pretty personal relationship. So he will know what to do about it. He might just read it and dismiss it and know it's not serious. Yeah, uh, what I completely uh, understood uh, while he was speaking, that sometimes it's not something so serious. It, it can uh, disturb the mind of the junior, but uh, it is not. Uh, he, in this case, the junior actually doesn't need uh, the counsel of his counsel. He simply needs somebody to open his mind and say, oh, this disturbs me so much, and he needs somebody to say, actually, it's not so serious. And uh, maybe in this case it is appropriate for a junior to turn to somebody equal to his senior and just to open the heart. Yeah, or, well, I mean, you, you know, if we have several confidential relationships in our life, then we just go to that person. But let's hope, ideally, all the counselors should work together anyway. You know? Actually, you know, even Guru and the, the counselors of his disciples, they should work very closely together. I mean, not that I want to always talk about the Swami, but you know, for him, I'm learning all these things. So he spends a lot of time with reports from his senior counselors. You know, they write reports about the counselees. He has programs where he sits for hours, hearing all the different reports, and, 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 you know, so there has to be some uh, cooperation. Otherwise, what's the use if the guru doesn't even know what the counselor is working on there with, with that particular disciple? You know, there, there has to be communication. Otherwise, useless. Otherwise, guru might just make some decisions if he doesn't even know directly, concretely what is going on in that person's life. So there has to be cooperation, you know. So, and then things can be, you know, addressed to a person who is equally connected or something and, 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 you know. And if it's more the problem that the counselee's mind needs that build or all that, that can be done by anybody who has the, the relationship with that person, you know? Yes? Are these points for everyone or just senior nobody? Because at some point in life, I was in a previous senior position even as a mother or a slave. So, in, in, in the point of our life, everyone's going to be in a senior position. So it's not that these points are just a senior boy in the room. So no, this is what, the, these are general principles. You know, these are general principles that we can only give shelter if we are sheltered ourselves. <coughs> and it just becomes maybe more difficult to deeply understand as the person becomes more senior. You know? If the person is not so senior, yes, of course, he needs a counselor, he needs some guidance, some shelter. But the point we want him to make is that even Senior most people, they also shouldn't want sheltering relationships. Even right enough that was working under somebody. And this is something which is not so easy for our brains to, to accept because you know, we always have this mundane paradigm that we think, oh, it means he's not qualified. But it actually doesn't mean that. It means the more he is advance, the more he will want that. That's the point. It's a sign of humility. I want to assist somebody. I want to be under somebody. <coughs> you know? That's the whole thing. And that's not so easy to grasp, you know? Because it is 180 degrees opposite of what we are conditioned by, you know? As Anyway, I think we just go on now. <laughs> give a whole course to so <laughs> Yes, but I, I just so strongly feel for this, you know? Yes, because it is very important. And I, I kind of feel it is not clearly recognized. 
And I've talked to different people about it, you know, and shared this. And, you know, it's not, I'm not talking about gurus, but pretty senior devotees. They were saying, hmm, I've never thought about it, that I need such a trusting, sheltering relationship. Yes, would it be bad to have something like that, you know? So that gave me the idea, my God, people are just not conscious of it. Yes. Yes, they're not conscious of it. No, no, it's not. That's the whole problem. You know, that's why this course is a very good introduction to this whole topic of spiritual culture because it makes it very clear already just in this thing how these two cultures are so opposite. They're actually incompatible. That's the whole issue. You know, and it, it comes out in this whole um, topic of shelter, you know, because materialists see it as weakness to take shelter, especially when they're so-called senior and advanced, you know, and we're just so stuck with this, and it, it sneaks always into our mind, you know, and we might even think it's offensive to think that our leaders should have children relationships. Right? Almost feels like that to the mundane eye, you know? Does that? How can you say something like that? You know? That's kind of what the mind is telling us, you know? Yes. Okay, let's continue. It, it will come even up a little bit later again. It's the thread that goes through all the Kind of, yeah. So, a mentor and spiritual caregiver should have the following qualities. Some are very simple and clear, some need a bit of elaboration. Should have a nice understanding of the philosophy and practice of Krishna consciousness. So, this is pretty obvious, you know. But it doesn't mean that he has to be a pundit. Yeah? He doesn't have to be very learned, he doesn't even have to be a good speaker or class giver or something. No, he simply has to have you know, a nice understanding of the philosophy and how to apply it. It should be you know, simple and the understanding should be there. You know? So our next one is a very stretchable one should have been active within ISKCON for a reasonable length of time. Which actually doesn't mean anything. <laughs> four or five hours. Four or five hours. Sorry. Well, see, that's the point. That it cannot be, you know, qualified how many years. You cannot send some minimum there. Minimum five years, seven years, ten years. Not possible. Because it really depends how a person is applying himself in the practice. You cannot just make some hard and fast rules there. Not possible. So that's why it is expressed, I think, on purpose in such a vague uh, terms, you know. Reasonable length of time, that can be anything. So it simply means it has to be individually considered and judged. Has that person got enough experience? Has he spent enough time in Krishna consciousness in order to have, you know, the mature understanding and and, and you know? So it's a very individual thing. You know? <coughs> the word is you in within ISKCON, because there are other maps. If you can take a counsel from Gautama, yes? He's also a Vaishnava. No, that's one that's size why within his term. And that's also very important. Yeah, and of course it is important, you know, because there's subtle differences in the mood and the focus and the emphasis and and and. So of course, you know, we want to stick to Prabhupada's family and Prabhupada's mission and Prabhupada's mood. Prabhupada was saying, whatever you do, don't leave his God. Well, we can say, well, I'm not leaving his God. I'm just having a counsel outside his God. Oh, but very easily it can simply be confusing because there's different moods and visions and emphasis there, you know. So no need to confuse ourselves. You know? 
In relationship to that, my groomer always used to say, the husband next door may be a perfect husband, but he's not our husband. <laughs> <laughs> husband next door may be a perfect husband, but he's not our husband. Prabhupada. Yes. 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 Yes, and, and that also in that word chastity, we use also in regards to chase to go, chase to paragraph, you know, chase to shastra, you know, so, you know, we don't want to be a, like a prostitute, we are saved by Prabhupada, but then, oh yeah, I can go here and there and so on, you know, it's kind of a little unchaste there. Well, she's only made that point with Bhattacharya. In regards to Sridhar's family. You know that story from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Can't remember now. Uh, Bala Bacharya came to Lord Chaitanya and said, that I find that these purports from Sridhar Swami have some mistakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lord Chaitanya said, If you find fault in your Swami, I consider you a prostitute. Okay, well, there you go. Yes. Okay, so. Should have been active for the next one for a reasonable length of time. Let's move on to the next one. Should be able to give balanced advice according to time, place and circumstance. So that's a pretty important one. You know, we don't want, you know, somebody, you know, to give us shelter who's just thinking and you know, square boxes there, everybody has to fit to one box there, you know, no, time, place and circumstance, you know, balanced advice, Krishna consciousness, so much of a question of balance, striking the right balance, so and in order to be giving balanced advice, what has, what does the counselor have how, how does the counselor have to be himself? Balance. Balance, yes. Exactly. So you can't give anything to others which you don't have. So if, you, if we cannot get our balance right in our life, most likely we will not be able to give balanced advice to others. Right? Very logical. Because we don't get the right balance ourselves. Right? So the person has to be well balanced. And only then he can give balanced advice. Should not have the tendency for taking extreme and controversial positions on issues. Should not be a fundamentalist with Kanishta mentality. Fanaticism. Right? So, means. You know, you should not have the tendency for extremes. Well, this is again an example of being unbalanced. You know, we go to extremes. And very often, it is also again in a subtle way, our good old friend the ego comes in, you know. And very often, false ego pushes us to take extreme positions because we want to be different than everybody else. That's actually very often underneath it. It's a subtle ego thing. You know? I see things different. Look at me, I'm seeing it like this. You know? And then we take extreme positions. And then if somebody wants to you know, discuss and maybe you know, um, yeah, point out this is not so balanced. Oh, then we defend it, then we get caught up in the whole ego battle there. You know, so this happens a lot. You know, so this tendency for extremes is really connected with false ego. Actually, I have once heard a nice um, definition of fanaticism. If our enthusiasm is not guided by a higher intelligence than our own, we become fanatics. Right? If our enthusiasm, if our enthusiasm is, is not guided by a higher intelligence than our own intelligence, 
then very easily when we end up in fanaticism. Huh? So, it means very often, especially in a younger stage, our enthusiasm is mixed with a mode of passion. There's a proportion of fault ego in it. Yeah? It's just the way it is. While we are younger and enthusiastic, oh, I can do it all. And blah, blah, blah. So, and if we don't have a higher intelligence than our own who guides us, then we become fanatics. You know, so any any good thing, any good aspect of Krishna consciousness can be taken into fanaticism. But distribution is the goal. Oh, everybody has to distribute books. You know, oh, you're not distributing books. Oh, you're a liar. You know? So, yeah. And, and then the false ego basically contaminates that good aspect of book distribution. You know? It just contaminates it. And, and nobody wants to hear about it. Everybody feels uncomfortable. You know, if the young part, oh, books, books, books. You know, that's what we call fanaticism. And you can do it with anything. I know, I know. Deity worship. You know, with anything and everything. You know, 24 hour care You know, you can take anything which is very valuable, but if it is mixed with this passion and false ego, then it becomes fanaticism and the whole idea is born. You know? yes. We see sometimes that a particular fanaticism <coughs> will take such root that it starts its own parampara within Islam. Isn't it? Yeah, well... Yeah. And if someone is so fanatic and so enthusiastic, but based on their own idea, and then people, it, it, if that person has any kind of charisma, then a whole line of people following that person yeah, it's is similarly fanatic. Yes. yes, it's dangerous. And it can even lead to splitting and all this. You know? we, we've had it, even in the early days when Prabhupada was there, some, some disciples you know, split off, started their thing. You know, it's always... The ego thing is always the root of it, you know, wanting to be supreme, better, different, having your own show there, you know, um, dangerous, very dangerous. Yeah, so obviously a person who has such tendencies, you know, he's not so suitable for being a shelter giver. Right? Because then very easily yeah, he starts his own path around or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Sometimes we might be taking, you know, shelter in, in such persons because we want to get what we want. We want to avoid, you know, the, the real instruction or something. Yeah, well, we get what we deserve, you know, and if we want to be cheated, we will be cheated, basically. That's what Google in the Marshall has very strongly expressed. I'd see, at least in those countries, where this whole giving and accepting shelter is a little bit more structured, there the shelter giving persons, they are authorized. They are appointed. Yes, you can't just take shelter in anybody, but somebody senior says, so this and this person, they are qualified to take shelter because as a young person you cannot see so easily. You know? It's in one sense a little bit similar there with, with gurus, you know, Diksha gurus. Also, they are appointed, they are authorized. Which doesn't mean that there is a guarantee, you know. But we have a system of authorizing gurus 
Very simple, because if we don't, then we end up with upper sampradayas. You know, that's how the whole line, you know, from Lord Chaitanya uh, got, got deviated and, and degraded because there was no system of authorization and appointment there, you know. Yes. And then you end up very easily with all kinds of deviations and somebody charismatic, you know, poses himself as guru or this or that. And if there's no system to really, you know, authorize, well, then you have every risk, especially in Kali Yuga, that you end up somewhere else, you know. And at least if we want to give it a little bit more structure and system, then usually those yatras who have that, you know, more structure and system, they also authorize persons. You know, they say they first assist a counselor and then they become counselor themselves. You know? So it's not that oh, anybody and everybody can just be counselor. Of course, in an informal way, nobody will stop us here, you know, where there's no system in place. Nobody will stop anybody from taking shelter and, and developing trusting, affectionate relationships, you know. But if we want to give it a little bit more structure, then there has to be some authorization there. Again, to protect the young devotees who cannot see who is qualified to do persons, you know. That's what it means. Very easily we take shelter there. Who, you know, and that person who satisfies our sense gratification. You know, who goes along with whatever we, we want, you know. Yes. like that, but we don't want to get into this now. Let's just stick to the qualities and we can, you know, these, these practical questions we will also discuss more tomorrow. So for the time being, let's just talk about the qualities we have to have in order to be able to give shelter. Let's understand them first and then we can discuss more how to start a system, this, that, how can it actually function. We'll, we'll park that. We'll leave it for later. Eh? Otherwise, we get stuck here and in all different directions. Yes? Very compact. 
soil should demonstrate good standard of salina. Why is that important? Just to be clear, why is it important? Yeah, well, so, you know, the, the council has to set a good example, you know, and sadhana is the source of our spiritual strength. Actually, without good sadhana, we will not be able so easily to give balanced advice, you know, right? We will not be able to be mature, sober. And, and, and especially balance. So, I mean, sadhana is it's the source of our spiritual strength that makes us understand things in proper terms. You know? And plus, we serve the young devotees by setting a good example that will inspire them to also have good sadhana. But if we don't have good sadhana, if we don't set the example, then they will also not really follow. And I mean, in some yantras, like for example, Chalpani, they even say it should be visible sadhana. It, you know, it's not enough just to do everything there at home behind closed doors and you never see the person at Mongolati or you never see him with a bee bag or you never see him attending a class. He's doing it all at home over internet only or something. You know, then easily some doubts come. The same person actually cheating 16 rounds, I never see him with a leaf pack, you know? So it's the, it's the duty of a, any senior devotee, and especially counselor, to conduct himself in such a way that he is above suspicion, you know? That nobody has some suspicion, oh, is he cheating or not, you know? Yes, we have to be transparent, we have to be above suspicion. So sadhana should be public. Yeah. And it's very inspiring to see senior devotees all oh, there there for Mokalavi, they're chasing with the other devotees together. Very inspiring. You know, but if we never see these examples, yeah, it, it is really, you know, some doubts come in the mind, you know. And 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 yes. So, sadhana etiquette. Well, that's a whole topic for itself. But especially etiquette in regards to main woman dealings. The council has to be very pucker, very exemplary. Yes. 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 Because that leads to so many problems if we change grass, most of etiquette. Even if we think we are safe and so strong and we, it's not so important for us, you know, still we have to follow just to set the, the example. So all our dealings, our etiquette, our behavior, you know, are we rude and rough with people and we transgress by enough etiquette. This is bad example. You know, so such a person is very limited in how much shelter he can give to others because Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of a devotee. You know? That's how he manifests his Krishna consciousness actually. You know? And if that is below standard, then he is simply not exemplary. He is not a, a shining example for others to follow and others will very easily follow his, his, his transgression there of etiquette and so on. And commitment to serving the mission of Srila Prabhupada. So there is, you know, that, that aspect of integrity is there, you know, that we have to have this integrity to Prabhupada, to Iskand, to Prabhupada's books, that we practice, that we walk our talk, you know? that we practice what we preach, that we are committed, we are committed 
to give our life and soul to serving Prabhupada's mission. If there's some, you know, some unclarity there, you know, not very good, you know, not very good. Cannot really be seen as exemplary and giving service to others. It has to be very clear, you know. Yes. Actually, this integrity, walking our talk, we can say it's a subtle way of being truthful, you know, that we don't say something, but then we do something else, you know, like even in Krishna walk in, in the story with uh, Krishna lifting over down hill, there when, when Nanda Maharaj is doing this yagya there to Lord Indra, little Krishna is saying, well, Sadhu, Sadhu has no secrets. So please explain me, why are you doing this yag yagya here? So this is a, an important principle, Sadhu has no secrets. His, his life is open, it's, it's according to Shastra. You know, there's not some hidden corners where he's doing something, you know, that nobody should know or something. No, no. It's, it's really like that, you know, actually, the more you are you're trying to serve devotees as being an example, the less you have private life. No, you, your life is public. Because it's meant to be according to Guru Sadhu and Shastra. You know, there's, there's not meant to be some closed doors and all what's happening behind closed doors here or something. No, no. Open. Yeah. And I mean, you know, as counselor also, there shouldn't be any funny skeletons in the closet here, you know. What about confidentiality? I mean, that's the thing that I think is confidentiality if someone reveals their mind, you know, something that might be really, really, you know, painful or private or personal. Well, we discussed that in the beginning when we were defining what is a sheltering relationship, you know, and there we were saying there has to be confidentiality there, you know, that we really have this feeling, this person, I can reveal my mind, I can really tell everything without whole Mayapur knowing tomorrow, being on the Mayapur forum. You know, no, you know, yeah, the confidentiality has to be there, you know. So it's more the person who's actually giving the shelter who are... Yeah, yeah, that's what, point that that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the qualities of the person who is giving shelter. So his life, you know, he has to walk his talk. There cannot be any hidden closet uh, skeletons there in the closet. It doesn't mean that he can't have some difficulties or something. Of course, we are all in the wash here, we are all in the shower, you know, he still might have, of course, some points where he has to work on himself or something. <coughs> but in any case, you know, the more transparent we are, the more open our life is, the more we can be beyond any suspicion and doubt, you know, the better. That will inspire trust, you know? But if you don't know, yeah, all right, when I, when I see him in public, he is like this, but then I never really know what is he doing there, and this and that, and, you know, then immediately we have some doubts, you know? If it is to this point, yeah. Then now, but maybe if it is to something which is maybe coming just it is, now. It is to work his talk. Yeah, okay. Uh, sometimes the uh, devotee comes to the counselor and asks for some advice. For example, oh, I can't get up early, how can I get up early? And in uh, this very period of time, the counselor has such a feeling that uh, he also faces the same problem, he also can't get up, get up early. In the same time, he has to tell to his uh, uh, counselor, uh, no, you must get up early, do so and so and so. And how do you do this? When right hand, uh, on one hand, the counselor should not be delicious, 
On the other hand, he has to give his advice. Yes, well, his advice simply will not have so much potency. Uh, no. That's all. If you don't practice it yourself, it will not have the same potency. We have that famous story, you know, where a mother with her son comes to some teacher or something and says, tell my boy not to eat sweets, and then he says, come back in one week, you know, and then the mother comes back after one week and then the teacher says, so my dear boy, you should not eat sweets. And then the mother asks, oh, well, couldn't you tell me that last week already? You know? Why did I have to come back? And then he said, well, last week I was myself eating so many sweets. So I had to stop 